DUP councillor Jenny Palmer is drafting a difficult letter, her resignation from the party she has supported and publicly represented for years. This letter is my resignation letter. But my husband's resigning as well. My family are resigning. My mother is resigning from the party because of the behaviour within the party that hold the power in Northern Ireland. Jenny Palmer is a whistleblower, a woman who told how she felt a party colleague tried to make her do something wrong. He said, the party comes first. You do what you're told. The man she accused was DUP Special Advisor, Stephen Brimstone. Mr Brimstone, why did you ring Jenny Palmer? and tell her to change your vote on the Housing Executive Board. Make sure that we do not thwart For two years, a debate has raged over who was telling the truth. Last week, an Assembly Inquiry's majority report said Jenny Palmer was compelling, consistent and convincing. It found Mr Brimstone evasive to the point of obstruction. I don't believe I'm in a position to share internal party matters with this guy and a separate civil service report recommended that he face a disciplinary inquiry. But eight days ago, Stephen Brimstone was rewarded by the DUP with the prestigious job inside the First Minister's office, earning a potential £91,000 salary. The uh, OFM, DFM uh, special advisors, who will be supplemented by uh, Stephen Brimstone, by that time, the party had already lined up Jenny Palmer for punishment. Earlier today, she sent her farewell letter to the DUP. And uh, it's a difficult letter to write, I have said in it. It's with a heavy heart that I felt it necessary to tender my resignation. But I certainly won't hang around for them to discipline me for telling the truth. Just two weeks ago, Jenny and her husband John were out campaigning for DUP MP Geoffrey Donaldson's re-election. They have been DUP councillors for years and last year they were both elected to the new Lisburn and Castlereagh Super Council. But after last week's events, they decided to resign from the party together. Over the past few days, I've conducted a series of interviews with Jenny Palmer and her husband about their decision. John and I are, um, we've talked with the children and uh, we've talked with each other and um, we're all of the opinion that We've been treated very badly. I knew that I had to uh, complete the journey. The party has been good to us. The party is a good party and it works really, really well. And you still essentially believe that, that the DUP is a good party? Yes, I do. Uh, and it's individuals within that party that are bringing that party down. If people within that party wants to search their conscience, you know. Jenny Palmer became a whistleblower in this Spotlight programme, broadcast almost two years ago. In it, we investigated allegations that the DUP made improper attempts to rescue the discredited East Belfast maintenance company, Red Sky. At the heart of that story is a phone call Stephen Brimstone, the special advisor to the Social Development Minister, Nelson McCausland, made to Jenny Palmer while she was on a visit to the Boyne battlefield. It was July 2011, 
a few days before the housing executive confirmed it would sack Radsky, putting the company out of business. As a member of the board of the housing executive, Jenny Palmer had already voted to dismiss Radsky. But she said Stephen Brimstone told her to change her vote and support Radsky. They told me that um, they needed me to basically uh, go against the decision of the board on the extension of the contract for Red Sky. And I said to him, I, can, I don't think I can do that. He said, we need you to do that. I went into shock. Who was the person who made the call? It was the minister's political advisor. Nelson McCausland's political advisor. And he gave his name as? Stephen Brimstone. We spent months trying to ask Stephen Brimstone if Jenny Palmer's story was right. It's Mandy McCauley from the BBC. I've been trying to contact you. I'd like you to answer some of my questions. Mr Brimstone, why did you ring Jenny Palmer and tell her to change her vote in the Housing Executive Board? Mr Brimstone, did Nelson McCausland tell you to ring Jenny Palmer and change her vote on the Housing Executive Board? We've tried repeatedly to... Good morning. Stephen Brimstone like later to told us through a solicitor that he did not accept that he put pressure on Jenny Palmer. Immediately after the program, the DUP leader was asked which member of his party he believed. First Minister, I have been asked to ask you which of your party colleagues, Councillor Jenny Palmer or Special Advisor Stephen Brimstone, do you believe? I certainly can't reach any conclusion without having spoken uh, to both of them. There was a narrative here that the Minister and certainly Peter Robinson didn't really know who to believe between Jenny Palmer and Stephen Brimstone when they were seeking to get to the truth. Days later, the Assembly was recalled from summer recess and it became clear the DUP were concerned to protect Stephen Brimstone's boss, Social Development Minister Nelson McCausland. We are not going to allow our minister to be kicked around in some political game either. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly, Committee Room 29. As the Assembly's Social Development Committee began an inquiry, Jenny Palmer says she started to feel like a target for her own party. I keep referring to the knives in the back um, because people who I thought were my friends and my family within that party. Some let me down. Some took the party line. Some believed that I should have gone in and uh, done what the party asked. It's not a nice place to be. What would you say to those people who would say, you were naive, this is Northern Ireland, in Northern Ireland you put the party first? I wasn't naive. I took a decision based on my conscience, based on what was right to do. And I try to do that. And if I'm punished for that, well, then I'm in a real party. One source of comfort came from Ian Paisley and his wife Eileen at a dinner. Baroness Paisley beckoned me over. And I went across and uh, she said, Jenny, we're really sorry about the position that you've been placed in by the party. And it would never have happened if Dr. Paisley had still been the leader of the DUP. And Dr. Paisley put his hand on my shoulder and he said, Stand firm in the faith, sister. So, sorry, but I suppose um, that gave me hope. In the months after the 2013 programme, the DUP made an attempt to heal the internal rift 
Jenny Palmer and Stephen Brimstone met at DUP headquarters with Peter Robinson to agree what was described as an apology. These five drafts were circulated but never agreed. Later, they would become the party's point of attack against Jenny Palmer. Exchanges in the inquiry hearings were often brutal, with DUP members determined to rebut the allegations. Despite the fact that we've had some fairly dodgy witnesses here, oh, never heard, I've never okay. heard that this, that this okay. kind of bullying. Okay. The DUP at no stage in that committee did they play the role of a party that was interested in finding what actually happened. Um, we'll evidence Wilson. of your bullying. We'll Sammy Wilson. Evidence of your bullying Sammy Wilson. on record. Sammy Wilson. Trevor Clark and Gregory Campbell repeatedly clashed with TUV leader Jim Allister. Sorry, Jim. Thug. I take great offence to being called a thug. And Sinn Féin's Alex Maskey, the chairman of the Social Development Committee. You, know, you need to reflect on that remark. And after a period of reflection, what? Hearings were twice suspended after clashes in the committee chamber. Well, I would have to say, I do believe there were a couple of the members of the DUP on that committee who, who were putting their party first. And I, I don't think there was, certainly I do not think they were putting public accountability first. Read out again. Read, no, read out again. Excuse me, I'm turning this inquiry. Oh, you're not turning very well. They were not uh, willing to question witnesses. They were more challenging witnesses who were making accusations against the minister or, or who were given evidence which they thought was detrimental to the interests of their ministerial colleague. It's quite clear that some members, <coughs> the DUP members, have come this morning to be the human shield in respect of the minister. All they did with anyone who they assumed to be hostile to them, to the party, and to their special advisor was basically just barracked, was booed, was, was, was chivied along the way. At no stage did they even try and show any sign of what I would call the simple basic humanity for a fellow party member when it came to their dealings with Jenny Palmer. The inquiry had moved into its second year before the committee members turned to the phone call between Jenny Palmer and Stephen Brimstone. When she came to give evidence, Jenny Palmer found herself under pressure from members of her own party. Will you tell us the truth the last time? You tell us the truth now. Uh, Some of you are very good at saying if I'm telling the truth or not. Um, I was I? shaking. I was trembling. I was afraid to lift the glass of water because my hand was shaking so much and I looked around the room and saw all the faces that I saw on television but never met some of them and I expected the DUP uh, um, on the left um, to give me a hard time but I didn't expect them to be so uh, aggressive. There are a number of Parts of your evidence that seem to be quite contradictory. Not only contradictory from what other people have said, Jenny, but contradictory from what you said yourself. John, what was it like watching those exchanges between Sammy Wilson and Jenny? Terrible. It was really, 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 really annoyed. You know, it was making the blood boil, you know, he was calling my wife a liar. All I'm saying is it doesn't add up that if the, this were, was, if the, those things were the case, that she could be telling the truth. I didn't. Do you think that the DUP were trying to get to the truth? Do you think that's what, what was driving them in those exchanges? Up until that point, um, Peter Robinson had been presenting this as a situation where he didn't really know who to believe between Jenny Palmer and Stephen Brimstone. Um, I asked him about this at the end of last year and he indicated that he had made up his mind as to who he believed and it would become apparent quite soon. Um, and I think in some of those hearings it was very apparent um, that the party had decided who it was going to back and they were going to back Stephen Brimstone and Nelson McCausland, not just privately or in some sort of in-house disciplinary process but in a very public um, and in a very forthright fashion. Evidence around the phone call became difficult for the DUP. In the inquiry hearings, Nelson McCausland's position was that he had already authorised the call. I think it was you that, that made the, 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 the eventual decision to ask Mr Bramstone to make the, uh, the phone call. That would have been the natural thing, yes. Yeah, so was, was you asked, asked him to do it? I said, no. I keep having to make the point, and I, I, 
it has to come into the answer, just a no real recollection of it, but that would have been the normal practice. But that's not what he'd said in 2013. Did Mr Brimstone make that phone call uh, at your behest? No. Did you know he was going to make that phone call? No. Mr McCausland told the committee that with hindsight, he could have told Mark Carruthers he had no memory of the call. In their final report, the committee said this wasn't a credible explanation for the conflict in his statements. Stephen Brimstone gave the inquiry his best recollection of the phone call. He said Jenny Palmer was very defensive and said he could not recall using the language she attributed to him. Earlier this year, vital evidence about the phone call was uncovered by the inquiry. This report on the phone call was ordered by the head of the civil service. It was conducted by civil servants who interviewed Jenny Palmer and Stephen Brimstone and they made their report in September 2013. It recommended that Stephen Brimstone face a formal disciplinary investigation. But Mr McCausland refused to show that to the committee and decided there would be no investigation. Someone who was entirely outside of the political uh, scene here, someone who was completely impartial when it comes to the various parties, when they looked at this in some detail, they felt there was a case to answer. There was a prima facie case, but that wasn't acted on, I think indicates where the problem is here. It's not um, in this instance with the civil service, it's with those who are their political masters. The committee threatened to use their full legal powers to get sight of the report. The new DUP Social Development Minister, Mervyn Storey, agreed to give them a heavily blacked out version. Even with the redactions, the report suggested that two other DUP members may have had some knowledge of the phone call on the day it happened. One of them was Jenny Palmer's MP in Lagan Valley, Geoffrey Donaldson. I rang Geoffrey and I said to him that I was thinking of resigning. Uh, that I'd received a phone call from Mr Brimstone and I was very upset about it. Um, and I couldn't do what he had wanted me to do. He said, Jenny, come you down and we'll have a private chat about the way forward. And it was in Stormont that I met him. And uh, he said, his words, not mine. You're a lamb to the slaughter here. And once you sell your integrity, you'll never buy it back. Stephen Brimstone was summoned to the inquiry five times. On two occasions, including his final appearance, he gave an affirmation to help the committee. I, Stephen Brimstone, do solemnly, sincerely and truly declare and affirm that the evidence I shall give shall be truthful and honest that I will give the committee all such information and assistance as I can to enable it to discharge its responsibilities. He then could not or would not answer questions more than 30 times, mostly because he said he would not discuss internal party matters, especially around the draft apologies. TUV MLA Jim Allister accused him of breaching his affirmation. I'm not prepared to answer internal party related matters questions relating to internal party related matters. You put that above your affirmation? I've answered the question, Chair. I'm not prepared to answer questions relating to internal party matters. I, again, I referred to my previous answer. And I referred to my previous answer. And I referred to my previous answer. I'm not prepared to comment on internal party matters. Can I ask, are you under instruction uh, from anyone else within your party to give that? Or is this something you've taken upon yourself as an interpretation of how you should respond? to the inquiry's questions? I can't comment on any <laughs> internal party matter. So you're not even going to tell me whether you've been instructed to do this or not? Well, in my view, that would be comment on an internal party matter. Okay, thank you. 
Stephen Brimstone's not a stupid individual. I think he will have known that he appeared completely ridiculous, um, and that in some ways indicates how far he was prepared to go not to answer some of these questions. Um, he was in a situation where just moments after taking an affirmation, um, which is the equivalent of an oath, that he would do everything he could to assist the inquiry, um, he quite happily said that he would not tell them certain things which he knew um, about how the party had initially wanted him to apologise to Jenny Palmer. It's not an appearance that I can recall seeing um, replicated by any other witness before a Stormont committee. In her last appearance before the inquiry, Jenny Palmer supplied MLAs with the five drafts of an apology exchanged between her and Stephen Brimstone. The committee was resolute. Uh, that they accepted uh, without hesitation Jenny Palmer's version of that telephone call because she gave uh, on a number of occasions very cogent evidence, very compelling evidence, it's, but crucially she backed it up with the written versions of an apology which Stephen Brimstone was unable or unwilling to countermand. But some DUP members saw the release of the drafts as a betrayal. A few weeks later, the party began disciplinary action against Jenny Palmer. I've heard DUP MLAs and councillors tell me privately, and I've no reason to disbelieve them saying, actually, we think Jenny was right. And yet, extraordinarily, not one single DUP MLA, not one single DUP councillor has actually said publicly what they've said to me and to other journalists privately. I find that absolutely extraordinary. And again, I don't know why and maybe it's something to do with the DUP saying this is going right from the beginning, this is a, a, an issue of internal discipline, we are going to deal with this. Maybe it wasn't just aimed at Jenny Palmer, maybe it was aimed at anyone else who was prepared to take her side. This is the letter that I received. She showed me the disciplinary letter she got from the DUP after her final testimony to the inquiry. It says, Dear Councillor Palmer, a complaint has been made that you have brought the party into disrepute by voluntarily discussing internal party business in a public forum and also in doing so have breached party guidance on appearance on the media. So basically you were being disciplined for bringing the party into disrepute by sharing the five drafts of the apology with a public committee in order to try and clear your name, in order to try and get the truth out there. Yes. Last Tuesday, seven Stormont parties accepted the inquiry report, saying Jenny Palmer was a compelling witness, that Stephen Brimstone had been evasive, and that Nelson McCausland had acted inappropriately as a minister because he became involved in contractual matters which should have been left to the housing executive. And I think all of us in that committee who came to it with any objectivity could not be failed to but be impressed with the compelling, transparent honesty of Jenny Palmer, of her courage in telling the truth. DUP members issued a minority report. It said that while Jenny Palmer's account of the phone call was clear and consistent, that did not mean it was accurate. It also said the other parties had prejudged the inquiry and they criticized the BBC for what they called Spotlight's arrogant refusal to answer questions before the committee. There were attempts, attempts, repeated attempts to praise the BBC. Dolores Kelly said that we owe the BBC a debt of gratitude. And Alban McGuinness said that there was a, the BBC did a good political uh, service in this programme. This is the same BBC who, despite repeated attempts by this committee to get them to come before us, refused refused to come and answer questions, great at posing questions, not great at answering them. All the DUP members present voted against the inquiry report. Jenny Palmer says she decided to resign when she saw that amongst them were her local MLAs, Paul Given and former Health Minister Edwin Putz. Both men had previously publicly stated that they were disappointed the party was pursuing disciplinary action against her. 
final nail in the coffin was Edwin Poots and Paul Given voting against the report. So they had voted against a report that exonerated Admit, yes. you? Yes, so I sent both of them, Paul Given and Edwin Poots, just a small message to say, search your conscience. And Paul didn't respond, but Edwin sent me one back. And then I said to him that I disagreed with his uh, the overview. What did Edwin Poots say in the text he sent you back? Oh. Open it. He said, Jenny, all of us put on record our support for you. Supporting a report led by Alex Maskey is a different proposition, and I disagreed. Mr. Putz also told her he regarded her as a very dear friend and wanted to keep her in the party, but he regarded supporting her as different from supporting a report led by the inquiry chairman, Sinn Féin's Alex Maskey. The DUP members had argued that this was a Sinn Féin-led committee. Sinn Féin has three members on that committee, the DUP have four. You know, so to say that the Sinn Féin-led committee, that then presupposes that Jim Allister and Dolores Kelly and Roy Beggs and Stuart Dixon are stooges for Alec Maskey or for Sinn Féin. I don't think anybody realistically sees that to be the truth. We asked Peter Robinson, Nelson McCausland, Sammy Wilson, Edwin Poots, Paul Given, Geoffrey Donaldson and Stephen Brimstone about the matters raised in this programme. They did not respond, but last night the DUP told us that both Nelson McCausland and Stephen Brimstone carried out their roles with integrity and sincerity. Neither the committee nor anyone else, they said, has brought forward any information which has proved otherwise. Nelson is a valued MLA and Stephen a valued member of staff. They acted at all times in the interests of saving public money and ensuring that proper protocols were put in place by the housing executive to guard against future overpayments. Last week, the Assembly voted to note the majority report. And that's it. There will be no further action. Nelson McCausland has a new role as chairman of Stormont's Culture Committee. Stephen Brimstone has started his new job at the heart of the executive. The DUP told us the committee inquiry was a kangaroo court that was motivated by political advantage rather than justice. Unlike the rest of the United Kingdom, there is no mechanism here to hold ministers to account. Accountability means that at some point you pin the tail to the donkey. It doesn't matter how high the, in the profession the donkey may be, but someone somewhere is held to account. Throughout this whole story, we have no idea. We have no idea because the minister's been allowed to get away in the fog or the previous minister's been allowed to get away. It seems like the special advisor is not, has now got away and the smoke trail has been left. The only person still standing and the only person at, the, at whom the DUP are pointing saying, you have questions to answer, is not their minister. It's not their special advisor. It's not all the people in various offices who may or may not have known. It's not the civil servant. It's one poor woman from Lisburn who dared to actually say, I'm not comfortable with what I've been asked to do. Jenny Palmer will continue her work in Lisburn and Castlereagh Council as an independent member. Her husband will too. They say they've had approaches from other parties, but don't yet feel ready to brave party politics again. Your credibility has been questioned mm -hmm. repeatedly. Sitting here tonight, was it worth it? Do you know why I've thought about that? And yes, I would do it every time because if something's wrong and we don't stand up for it and put it right, then we're, you know, we're showing a bad example to the rest of the country. I did what I thought I had to do. It was my conscience. I had to look in the mirror and I had to say, can I live with myself? <laughs>